Hi, this is Ray at racehobby.net. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the mobile web app for OpenSprinkler and OpenSprinkler Pi. So this mobile web app provides an intuitive and polished user interface for accessing OpenSprinkler as well as OpenSprinkler Pi on mobile devices, including smartphones, tablets, and also uh, desktop browsers. Now this app is uh, contributed entirely by Samir, who is an OpenSprinkler user, and you can find out more about his projects uh, at the link uh, given uh, below. Before I start, let me mention that in order to get this app running, uh, you need a working OpenSprinkler running firmware at least uh, 1.8.2 uh, or above. Um, if you don't already have this set up, uh, you can follow the instructions on my blog post. So here I am using the upcoming OpenSprinkler 2.0 uh, for demonstration. If you're confused about what a web app is, it's basically an app that runs in a web browser. And compared to a native app such as iPhone or Android app, the biggest advantage of web app is that uh, the same app runs on multiple platforms. And also you don't need to install anything really. Um, just to point your browser to the web app's URL uh, and then you're all ready to go. You can run it right away. Now although this is uh, often slower than a native app, the performance is typically uh, sufficient for many applications. Samir has made the app available in two versions. One is hosted on racehobby.net server and this version is the easiest to start with. You don't need to install anything. Just to point your browser to the app's URL, which is racehobby.net slash apps slash sprinklers. And you can start using it right away. Note that because the app is optimized for mobile experience, it's best if you use it on a smartphone or a tablet although you can use it perfectly on a desktop browser as well. Technically speaking, the app is written uh, in PHP scripts uh, using HTML5. So basically the scripts uh, serve as a front end, uh, which provides you with a polished and intuitive uh, user interface, and it communicates with the back end, namely your OpenSprinkler controller, um, through HTTP commands. So in order to make this work, um, the, your OpenSprinkler controller has to be accessible uh, by the Race Hobby server. So you need to set up port forwarding uh, on your router. You should refer to the instructions of your router to check out how to do so. Most modern routers support the port forwarding feature. Uh, as a quick demonstration, here is my router's home page. Uh, and here is the port forwarding uh, configuration. Uh, so first of all, we can see that uh, my OpenSprinkler has an IP address of uh, 192.168.1.200 and uh, it's using port 80, which is the default, uh, default uh, HTTP port. And so I've set up uh, the uh, port forwarding here that maps the external port 80 to the internal port 80 uh, and the internal uh, IP address is my OpenSprinkler's IP address. So this way, an external request um, on port 80 will be mapped to the uh, OpenSprinkler on port 80 as well. Of course, the uh, external and internal ports don't necessarily have to be the same. Um, to verify that the port forwarding is uh, working, you can basically um, type in your router's external IP address or in this case I have uh, um, uh, a, a dynamic DNS set up so that I can type in my dynamic DNS which is racehobby.dyndns-web.com so if you type in this then you should see your uh, OpenSprinkler's home page if this is successful, uh, then that means your port forwarding has uh, been set up cor uh, correctly. Now let's go back to the app. Um, again, uh, it's at racehobby.net slash apps 
slash sprinklers. If this is the first time uh, you are um, using the app, you will need to fill in your um, access information, including uh, the sprinkler, uh, con uh, the external IP address, or your dynamic DNS, um, and, and optionally a, a port number if you uh, are using um, a port number other than the default 80. Uh, then your Open Sprinklers password, uh, which is uh, by default uh, Open Door. And then once you submit, uh, just wait for a few seconds and then you should see the, uh, the app's uh, homepage. Um, so it's, this is a very nice and clean design. Uh, for example, you can you have access to a list of uh, status, control, and preview links, um, and also a weather icon indicating the current weather condition. Now, if you go to the status page, um, you will see the current status of every station, um, and also on the home page, uh, there are two buttons. The upper left button here brings out the uh, control panel where you can reset uh, the uh, access information and you can even uh, import or export uh, your Open Sprinklers configurations which are very useful um, and also you can read about the details about this app including the current version uh, and also the background of the app um, and also if you really like this app because Samir wrote this um, you know, completely for free. Um, if you like this app, I uh, suggest that you make a small amount of donation uh, to him. And going back to the home page, the other uh, button on the uh, right uh, upper right corner will bring out the uh, settings uh, panel. Uh, so here you can set the device options. And so, for example, I can set the first station as a master station, and you know this is similar to the uh, the standard Open Sprinkler firmware options, uh, but you know presented in this app. And then when I submit, uh, so this will set a station the first station as a master station, uh, as, as you can see in the uh, the status here. The first station is a master station. And you can do uh, other settings like uh, you know change the uh, station name here. You can give a station uh, a custom name, um, and also some uh, perform system controls like switch to menu mode uh, or reboot the Open Sprinkler. Now it might lo look like in order to run the app, you would have to start the browser and type in the URL. Uh, each time, uh, but this is not true. You can actually add uh, the link uh, to this page as a bookmark to your home screen and you can give it a custom name and then once it's added to the home screen it will uh, just look like uh, a, a normal app. So each time you want to run the app you can simply click on the icon and that will bring up the app interface. Um, and what's better is that uh, once this app uh, runs, uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the normal uh, web browser's URL and uh, the search bar is removed. So, uh, so this looks truly like a native app. Again, you can do the same thing on a smartphone as well. So by adding the shortcut to home page, um, it will create an icon and then uh, you can just click on this icon and that will bring up the uh, the app um, interface. So this is a uh, this is very convenient. Now let's go to the menu control page. Uh, here I have my solenoid testing box set up uh, to simulate uh, actual uh, valve actions. Uh, so on the menu page uh, you can uh, you can turn on a station uh, by just clicking on the station name. To do so, first of all, we have to switch the controller to menu mode. So menu mode on, and then uh, you can just uh, click on a station name uh, to activate uh, the station. And clicking on it again uh, will release the station. Now, when a station is running, it, you can go back to the home page. 
and uh, at the top of the home page you will see a green bar uh, uh, that shows the station that's currently running. The manual mode is very useful uh, for diagnosing your sprinkler system uh, but keep in mind that it does not automatically return back to the program mode. So if you've left the controller in manual mode when no station is currently running, the app will show a red bar at the top to alert you about this. Now let's turn the manual mode off. And go back to the home page to uh, check the run once program feature. Now, the run once program is very useful if you want to perform a one-time uh, watering uh, pass, say, to give some stations more water time. You can either use the input box here, or you can just slide the, um, the slide bar to set the desired amount of water time for each station. Then click on the submit button here. And then you can see that the run once program uh, has now started. Again, on the home page, uh, you can see the um, station that's currently running and also the remaining uh, water time, and it automatically counts down. Also, if you go to the current status page, this shows the complete list of stations that is either currently running or is waiting to run. If you want to reset all stations, you can go to the home page and just click on stop all stations and confirm. Then all the stations will be reset. Keep in mind that since the app is just a front end, uh, it does not replace the controller's uh, firmware. So the normal Open Sprinkler home page is still available and functioning. And whatever you do in the app will be reflected in the controller's home page too and vice versa. Now let's take a look at the program feature. Here you can see the entire list of programs uh, and I have currently only two programs. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can review an existing program, you can make modifications, uh, you can delete a program uh, and also you can add a new program. So to add a new program this is uh, the same way as uh, on the uh, standard Open Sprinkler web page. So basically, if it's a weekly schedule, you can select days, and if it's interval schedule, you can uh, set the uh, interval and the start day. You uh, can select the number of stations, uh, sorry, the set of stations, uh, and also the uh, the water time, including start and time, duration and interval. Again, you can either use the editing box or you can just uh, simply uh, drag these uh, slide bars. And finally, remember that you have to enable a program by uh, checking the enabled uh, checkbox. At the home page, you can also select to pre preview the programs. So here is a visualization of how the programs are going to be executed uh, during a day. Uh, and this app also provides a very nice uh, convenient way of changing to a different day. Um, and then um, it shows you the uh, program uh, preview um, of uh, the, that particular day. Compared to the standard uh, program preview feature on the uh, the Open Sprinkler firmware, the app's uh, preview feature gives you more flexibility, such as uh, easy changing out to a different day. So this covers most of the features in the hosted web app. Uh, just to summarize, all you need to do to use this app is to set up port forwarding on your router. Um, I highly recommend you to give it a try and let us know your feedback and suggestions. Uh, Samir has been actively uh, improving the app, and uh, I can't uh, thank him enough for contributing his time and efforts to perfect this app. Now I will briefly explain the second version of the app, which requires you to install the app on a local web server. Now most of the features of the second version um, are shared with the hosted app as I explained above. 
but the self-installed app uh, has two additional features that you may find very useful. One is logging, and the other is weather-based rain delay. Now, in order to enable these two features, you need to have a local web server that can periodically pull your open sprinkler or retrieve online weather data. Your local server can be set up on a Raspberry Pi or any machine that runs a Linux system such as Ubuntu Linux. And speaking of which, if you have an open sprinkler Pi, uh, you can actually use the same Raspberry Pi to interface with the open sprinkler Pi as well as serve as the web server. Um, in any case, for the specific instructions, uh, you can uh, uh, refer to my blog post. Okay, long story short, um, here are the basic steps to install the app. I am going to use a Raspberry Pi as an example for the web server. First, you need to uh, install the Apache uh, web server on the Raspberry Pi, and then follow uh, Samir's instructions to download and copy the app files, which are mainly a set of uh, PHP scripts uh, to your the uh, web server's uh, root directory. So in this case, it's in my var www slash sprinklers. Uh, you can see the list of files here. And you also need to make sure that your d uh, directory has uh, the, uh, the correct read and write permissions because the logging feature requires modifying uh, a local data file. And once this is done, you can open a browser and point your browser to the, uh, the web server's uh, URL, uh, which is the uh, IP address of the Raspberry Pi slash sprinklers. So here is the web interface. Uh, and basically here, uh, you, you will need to create a username and password and then you uh, put in your Open Sprinklers access information. Again, my Open Sprinklers IP address is 192.168.1.200, and the password is open door. Uh, and then here is where the, um, the uh, certain files will be stored, including the uh, logging files and the logging frequency uh, or the duration. And then once you submit the uh, you will be automatically directed to login interface. So you put in your username and password, um, and then you sign in. And then here, you can see this is the uh, the, the web app interface, which is very similar to uh, the um, the hosted web app, but with the additional option of uh, uh, the the log. Okay, now I have run the stations for a little while and let's check the uh, logging feature. So, as you can see here, it categorizes the uh, logging data uh, by station names. For each station, uh, you will find a list of completed programs and the uh, corresponding uh, timestamps. So, this is very useful if you want to keep track of the history of uh, your station runs. The second additional feature, as I mentioned, is weather-based rain delay. Uh, this is a feature written by Andrew, who is an Open Sprinkler Pi user. Uh, you can find out more uh, details about uh, this uh, feature uh, from his GitHub repository, uh, the link of which is given below here. Now, uh, basically, this is uh, a script that periodically pulls uh, the Yahoo weather uh, website um, and retrieves the uh, weather information using your location data um, and the Yahoo Weather API will return a, a weather condition code uh, such as light rain, thunderstorm, um, showers, etc. Um, and uh, so the script is associated with uh, a data uh, file that, uh, in, that defines the amount of rain delay hours uh, for each weather condition code. Uh, so you can modify um, these uh, values as you wish. And once you have set it up, it will run uh, as a, a, a cron job in the background. So it will peri periodically send an HTTP command with the rain delay request if uh, the corresponding weather conditions are detected.
So this feature is a work in progress and we will probably integrate it with the OpenSprinkler firmware so that it can run automatically on the uh, OpenSprinkler controller itself in the future. Okay, so this summarizes the self-installed web uh, app and the weather feature. I'm really, really glad to see these wonderful user contributions. They absolutely help to make OpenSprinkler a better product and also the discussions on the forum really inspire new ideas. If you have comments and suggestions, uh, please post them on the Race Hobby uh, forum, which is at racehobby.net slash phpbb3. Okay, so that's all. Thanks for watching this video.